Hello, I'm Dan Alford. Welcome to the Arc Specialties Weld of the Week. This week's Weld of the Week is going to be a little bit different. Before we start, I need to explain the differences between a metallurgical bond and a mechanical bond. All the Weld of the Week episodes up till now are metallurgical bonds. What that means is we've actually melted some of the base material, it's diluted into the weld metal, and forms a joint or an overlay which is metallurgically bonded to the base metal. But there's a whole other world out there of thermal spray. Thermal spray produces mechanical bonds. Now a mechanical bond isn't nearly as strong, but it allows us to do interesting things like put down completely dissimilar materials which are normally incompatible with each other. So this week's episode is about thermal spray. This is a family of processes which are not meant for joining. They're strictly meant for overlay, but they allow us to do things like put zinc on steel or aluminum on steel, or even apply ceramic coatings to parts. Although thermal spray isn't nearly as well known as the welding processes, you can find examples all around you. For example, aircraft engines. The temperature of the jet plane fuel burning inside the engine exceeds the melting point of the engines. So all the combustor cans have to be coated with something with a higher melting point. We coat these with plasma spray and ceramic coatings. And things as simple as Teflon pans. To prevent the Teflon from being removed, you actually have a large number of small spherical particles sprayed into the pan before you coat it with Teflon. So when the spatula hits the pan, it doesn't tear the Teflon off. Instead, it hits the top of these small medical particles. Bridges are sprayed with zinc to prevent corrosion. And even 18-wheeler wheels are coated with carbide on the inside to prevent the tire from rotating relative to the wheel. As with welding, there are numerous different processes to accomplish thermal spray. Today we're going to showcase four of them, but if you'd like more information, I encourage you to go check out the International Thermal Spray Association website. Arc Specialties is a member of this, and they have a lot of good information for you that goes beyond our talk today. So today we're going to showcase four different thermal spray processes. The first one is an oxy-fuel flame spray application. We're putting down a chrome nickel silicon boron hard facing material directly onto the workpiece using an oxyacetylene flame. This material can also be applied with an arc. The advantage of a flame spray application is we have zero dilution so we maximize the hardness of our overlay material. Our second thermal spray process today is twin wire arc. The way this works is you have two contact tips with two wires which come together. When they come together they arc and melt the metal and then this metal is propelled to the workpiece using air or some other gas. You have to prepare the part with shot blasting to produce an anchor pattern because again this is simply a mechanical bond. But the great thing about this process is you minimize the heat put into the base metal. In this case we wanted to start with a quenched and tempered or hardened piece of pipe but we didn't want to damage the heat treat and it works rather well. This is an unusual wire. We can create not just coatings but thick sections. So we're not just putting a hard coating on this, we're actually creating the ribs which stand up over an inch. Normally these ribs are formed by machining away most of the metal from a heavy wall pipe and then heat treating and then doing the final hard facing. By building these ribs up, this is like additive manufacturing. You're creating the exact rib shape you need and at the same time you're creating the hard coating that will prevent wear as it rubs against the rock. Our third thermal spray process today is high velocity oxy fuel. You're actually creating a supersonic jet coming out of the torch and then into that jet you introduce the metal. It melts in the flame and it also gets the kinetic energy from the high velocity jet. So it's this combination of thermal energy and kinetic energy which causes the particles to adhere to the substrate. Once again you need a anchor pattern so typically we will shot blast these parts before we spray them. This is commonly used in the valve industry to coat balls. It's used for carbides, nickels, quite a few different materials. What makes this process unique is a supersonic jet plume. The kinetic energy that it imparts to the particles as they impact the part improves adhesion and bonding. You can always tell that it's supersonic if you look in the plume and see the shock diamonds which look just like what you would see in a supersonic jet as it takes off. Our fourth and final thermal spray application today is one of the oldest ones but it still has application in today's industry. One reason is that it kind of blurs the lines between metallurgical bonds and mechanical bonds. This is called spray and fuse. We're using an oxy fuel flame to melt the particles and spray onto the part, but it's only poorly bonded at that point. What we do afterwards is we go through a subsequent induction heating cycle, which causes the matrix, which is chrome nickel silicon boron, a self-fluxing brazing material, to actually braze to the part. So you get an actual metallurgical bond in this 
case. So this is an excellent technique to use when you need absolute zero dilution in your overlay material, but you also need a metallurgical bond and high bond strength. What I've learned over the years is sometimes the best way to apply a coating is with thermal spray rather than welding. This is why we built a lab at ARC just to test the various thermal spray processes. If you think you have an application that might benefit from thermal spray, give me a call. We look forward to posting new episodes of the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. If you're one of the thousands of operators of ARC Specialties equipment around the world and you have a weld that you would like to showcase, please contact us. At ARC Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.